Or should we blame the images on TV? No, blame Panadol! Blame Panadol! For the beady little eyes and flapping heads of mortal eyes. Blame Panadol! Blame Panadol! We need to form a full assault! It's That's, of course, South Park. And I have to say, you know, when South Park is on, they are really, really on. Still, still to this day. And I don't know why I thought it was fitting for this kind of strange but interesting discussion with author and radio host Alan Warren, who I have almost nothing in common with. But in the end, I guess we do find some common ground. We are like the opposite extreme of every question I ask him. You know, are you a biological robot in meaningless universe? He says, yes. You know, conspiracies, no. Uh, you know, e- extended consciousness, no. Well, first of all, both the traditional Church of Satan and the Church of Satan have given me an honorary doctorate. So if you want to talk about satanic worship and what's real and what isn't, it's all man made. Hopefully, we all want the same thing in the end, right? We all just want to be happy, live a good life, and um, in, enjoy our freedom. I, I hope that's what we want. And and with that, yeah, there's going to be bumps along the way. But I, I don't see why we need to uh, bring down other people and hurt other people. By the way, Alan is from Canada. Welcome to Skeptico, where we explore controversial science and spirituality with leading researchers, thinkers, and their critics. I'm your host, Alex Sikaris, and today we welcome Alan Warren to Skeptico. Al is a best-selling author, so many, many books, uh, amazing. I mean, Above Suspicion, Bloodthirst, Vampire Killer of Canada. I could just go on and on, but many, many books bestsellers. He's also the host and producer of very popular NBC News Talk Radio, true crime, history, conspiracy show, House of Mystery. So he's really very interesting guy. And we were just chatting a minute ago about this interview, because it's one of these that kind of took a twist as the more I got into Al's stuff, Because at first glance, I was like, wow, this guy is into a lot of the same stuff I am. And then he was nice enough to do this little survey questionnaire thing that I've been doing. And lo and behold, we are like, (laughs) we are like the opposite extreme of every question I ask him. You know, are you a biological robot in meaningless universe? He says, yes. You know, conspiracies, no. Uh, You know, extended consciousness, no. So, so one of the things I thought would be cool, I know it's a long intro, but I want to set people up for this. You know, at this time, at this particular time, when people can't even dialogue, can't even sit in the same room and say, you know, you know, what do you believe? Uh, That's okay. Here's what I believe. It might be interesting to explore two things. One, hopefully demonstrate that we can do that a little bit, but also maybe explore how you do that, how you do that without giving up your, you know, sense of self enough to say, yeah, but here's where I think the facts lie. So with that very long, lengthy introduction, it is really a great pleasure to welcome you to the show. Al, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's my pleasure. I um, I look forward to it. <laughs> well, we'll see what you say in an hour. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. You know, like I, like I was saying before, you know, it's not, exchanging ideas should not be an angry, emotional thing. Um, you know, uh, the, the idea of, of freedom and America and freedom of speech and that whole thing is that we exchange ideas, that we do have differences and that uh, you know, we we stay true to one thing, and that is the actual freedom. So uh, you know, I it it you know, at the end of the day, you might not agree with a lot of what I say, and I might not agree with you. But the thing is, at the end of the day, we're both still here, and um, 
there's just no, I just don't understand all the anger that people have in their conversations and, and even political when they get out there. I just, I don't understand why there's so much um, emotion right now. Do you think, because I'm going to jump right to one of the things that I suspect is that a lot of that is engineered, if you will. And I, I say that word very carefully in that, you know, I think we all know how to push each other's buttons, right? We can do it. You know, you, you're a smart guy and I've heard enough of your interviews. You don't push buttons and anyone who doesn't push buttons or probes in a way knows how to do it. And I think collectively, it's just a given. I mean, we, we turn on the news. I mean, we know how to push buttons. So do you think some of this is engineered? Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I agree with that totally, except for the engineering isn't always for the same reason and isn't always for by the same people. So, you know, uh, a lot of it is political, um, but it's, that's not what it's all about. You know, so we have to be careful not to generalize and say uh, that might be a lot of the problem just to say, oh, all of one group. It's it's the agenda of so and so and to pick a group and to always just and to lump everybody in that same group is the first problem because we're all very unique and we all have different experiences. And so for me to just say that let's say you know even say something like you oh he's just a conspiracy he's just he's just whatever what is the point of lumping someone in without hearing them out because there's going to be a lot of details you can pass on to me that I'm not going to get from anybody else so um again you know I'm back to that same thing yeah some of it is engineered but um isn't it also our responsibility to to make herself aware and make herself a little bit more intuitive and more intelligent and, and understand things, you know, try to really listen and kind of go, well, you know, you know where that's coming from and just kind of walk by, you know, we don't have to absorb all of this stuff. You know, there's two things that you said there that I think really deserve to be pulled apart. One is to, kind of have the discernment to say, I'm being played, and I won't be played, I won't be manipulated in that way. Whether it's, you know, and, and again, we got to be get down to specifics, or it just all sounds, you know, kind of airy fairy out there. So, you know, if, if, if like, I, I, the way I like to do it, like, I could talk Black Lives Matter, you know, but that's going to be too hot. Or I could talk the pandemic, <laughs> that's going to be too hot. I, I, what I've been talking about on the show for the last year is uh, Gloria Steinem, right? Because mm -hmm. she kind of popped up in this latest, they did, uh, I think it was Netflix, or whatever. did a really great uh, show on it. And she's an interesting kind of person. But historically, Gloria Steinem has been outed. She outed herself. Well, first she was outed as being CIA. And then she was confronted with it. And she had to acknowledge it. She had to say, well, yeah, I was CIA, but that's okay, because, you know, they really aren't the bad guys you think they are and really needed to do it for the movement and all the rest of that. And then if you further deconstruct that like we have, and you go look at the evidence, you go look at her former bosses at the CIA, it really, her story doesn't really add up. She's, she's massaging the story in that she was CIA from, get, from jump, not just, it's not like she was a feminist who used the CIA to advance her cause. She was a CIA operative who was then assigned to be a feminist. This is disclosed in documents from her operatives and from her operator, her bosses at the CIA that she did this, right? So that puts a completely different spin on what that means. And, you know, I, I spoke with a woman, uh, just a really, I really like and respect her. And she was the former head and founder of the Women's Studies Program at uh, Cal State Chico, which is, besides being a good party school, also a good enough school, good academically. And she was really cool and very open to hearing that information because it was very new to her. And it was obviously outside of what she wanted to kind of go. And her first reaction is the reaction that a lot of 
women who are attached to that movement say, it's like, I don't care. You know, the women's movement needed to happen. And so the CIA was involved. I don't care. It needed to happen. And on one level, I totally get that because it did need to happen. My mother didn't have any opportunities other than just be a wife or be a nurse maybe, but that didn't fit her. You know, she was into jazz. She was into, she was an artist. It didn't fit her at all. And she was in this box and she was really struggling to get outside of that box. Things are different now. Things are better now. And Gloria Steinem helped make that happen. But can we really accept that a group of CIA guys engineered and ran that program covertly? And can we really accept that Gloria Steinem never really came clean? She still hasn't come clean on it all the way. It's only as the information rolls out does she give a little bit more and a little bit more. So that's, that's my little speech on that one that I think applies to all these things. Because the way it applies to Black Lives Matter, is there a real issue in terms of racism in our country? Absolutely. You know, is that something that we need to, you know, take time and deep thought on? Absolutely. Is it somehow a game that's being engineered and run just like Gloria Steinem was being engineered and run? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I listened to that, but I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what, what you want me to say about it. Well, see, that's, um, that's a great point, but go ahead. Do you have anything else to say about that? Uh, no, because I, in essence, you, you might be right. I, I think that, um, you know, I don't know enough about Gloria Steinem to, to, to really comment. Um, but as far as Black life, Lives Matter, you know, if they, um, so it's your, your contention that they were engineered from before they even became a movement? Or is this something that sort of happened? Let's go back to Gloria Stein because there was an interesting moment in this conversation that gets back to what I was talking about at the beginning of how these conversations go, how these dialogues kind of run afoul, I guess I feel like. It's like, I just told you facts. You can go look up those facts. You can go look up the documents. You can go look up the interview where Gloria Steinem says herself she was in the CIA. That's out there on YouTube. You can watch it. Her own lips. She's moving. She's saying that. So we could pause this interview if you want, and we can come back two days later, and you can go, you can go back up and see if everything I'm saying is true. But my experience is people don't want to do that because they don't want to, they don't really don't want their beliefs to change. They don't want to deal with the, the question that I posed, which is, do you want the CIA running the women's movement? You know, and, and how far do you want to go to say, well, gee, if the CIA is involved, that changes everything for me. Well, I think, I think, no, I, I, I don't have a belief in anything that would change whether Gloria Steinem was, right in with the CIA from the, from birth or not. Um, I just like to, uh, in fact, I, I would probably want to know more about it in the sense of uh, when did she join? Why did she join? Was it part of uh, 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 just a couple of members? Was there an agenda by the whole organization? Like I'd like to know more details on the background rather than, um, and it's not that I don't believe you. Uh, it's, it's more about, First of all, more back, more background. What what was the agenda, and um, and also what is it that we're that you think we should do now today, in 2020, about what Gloria Steinem did in the 60s, and her involvement with the CIA then? Like, what is what's our what's our outcome? How are we going to make this better? And um, what do you what do you want to happen? Well, so in the first part of that, uh, again, when you're getting hit with this stuff, you know, like I am, and there's no reason you would, you would know this unless you've done this kind of obscure conspiratorial research, which everyone needs to do, and that's where you need to start. And we've been conditioned and trained not to do that, not to look at the other side. So you'll go find these documents. 
You'll go find these interviews. You'll go find the people in the feminist movement who first outed Gloria Steinem. That's how she got outed by fellow feminists who said, this is faux feminism. This is someone co-opting our movement. That's how she came out. That's how she was outed. But the part that you, you kind of skipped over, it's not like they recruited members of the feminist movement. That is they, the CIA. Gloria Steinem, from the time she was in college, was identified as someone who the CIA was going to work with. So they gave her a fellowship. They uh, gave her money. They gave her her first job was infiltrating like uh, student organizations and music movements. And you can actually go read the memos from her bosses who come back and go, wow, this, this woman is a superstar, man. She is the thing, you know. So all that was before feminism. But let's just put that as a maybe what I'm saying is true thing and get to your second question. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's completely fundamental to uh because it's fundamental to what we believe about our government about how social justice works about how social change works it's fundamental to all of that so until we answer those questions until we wrestle something like that to the ground factually we can't answer the second part of that question well then i'll leave it up to you to figure this out <laughs> I, I, I'm just not sure. Well, I'm not sure exactly what, where you want to go with this. Um, I'm not sure what, I'm trying to think what you exactly want to, to achieve. I, I'm just not sure um, if all you say is true, then I, I'm just not sure. It, is, is this a, how are you relating this to 2020? Well, the first way it relates to 2020 is that we, we still don't have the history straight. We're doing Netflix specials that tell a different, a different history. And I think most people in this country would have a different feeling about feminism. The woman I told you who, you know, is the head of the women's study at Chico State, this would be very, very relevant to her work to a women's studies department at, uh, at any university. So it's something that does need to be understood. And it's, I, I, see, that's where I, I don't feel like we're really engaging here because it's obviously extremely relevant, right? Well, I'm, 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 I'm not sure what part of it that you're you're trying to um, to address. Uh, is it that uh, it's not written in history properly, and that um, places like Netflix is not really giving us the full story, um, or whoever else writes or talks about any of that sort of stuff? I'm I'm just trying to figure out what what your point is trying to address um like who who is it like who is it that should do what well l i mean gloria steinem was a cia operative and she was the mm -hmm. one running the women's movement that okay. doesn't change your paradigm, your worldview about social justice, about social movements, about how things change. Like we started this discussion about talking about engineering. That doesn't change your worldview regarding how what we think we know is engineered? No, because um, I believe a lot of things have been engineered. A lot of things have been uh, pushed a lot of agendas have been achieved and some haven't but i don't know 50 years later um it's all done and i don't believe that there's a current 
like as people would say, a deep state that runs the world, a global, I, 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 I'm not an Alex Jones guy. So I can't go that far. You know, if this, in this particular case, she might've been, you know, let's say you're hundred percent right. She was uh, exactly what you say she was. Um, that's cool. Let's go with that. Um, but it's a done deal. It's passed. Um, yeah, there should be more information that comes out about it now because it's so long ago. I don't know what difference it would make for a lot of people in the public. Uh, because I think the, the goal was achieved and most people agree with what the outcome was. So I'm kind of not at a at, uh, I'm just trying to figure out where, where you're trying to connect this. Yeah, there's things engineered. It doesn't change my point of view at all. If I find out things like this are 100% true, I'm not surprised. America, this is what America is, has been all about, as far as I'm concerned. And as I get older, it becomes more and more about it. And I don't think it's changed, and I don't think it's going to change in our lifetime. So, um, so I'm, I, I think that we have to, like you said, we have to be more specific. So when you take a specific case like Gloria Steinem, you also have to have a specific remedy. We also have to have, this is what we need to do with Gloria Steinem. This is how we need to talk. This has to come out. That's all fair enough. Um, but I don't automatically change the whole the whole world as it is now, it doesn't make me feel any different about CIA. Well, how do you feel about CIA? Because it seemed to me what you said, to me, there's a contradiction between saying, and I hear this all the time in people who are like anti-conspiracy theory, which is kind of like on its, on its face is just kind of ridiculous because we all accept that there are these conspiracies. We run into them all the time. You know, I mean, that's how the world works, particularly if you come from the business world like I did. Everything in business is everything is a conspiracy. You know, it's like, where do you buy your hot dog buns if you're McDonald's? You know, it's like everything that involves any kind of money or power is a conspiracy. Why would it be any different in politics? Why would it be any different in intelligence organizations? But you know, you seemed like to me like you were started off by saying, well, I don't believe this deep state nonsense. Well, Gloria Steinem is an example of deep, deep state. It's a hidden force that's decided to step on the playing field in order to engineer, socially engineer our beliefs and our values. Jesus, you can't get any more deep state than that. So you either push against it and go, well, that's bullshit. It didn't really happen that way. But if it did, then you're in the deep state soup. It's just a matter of whether you think the deep state is okay or not. No, because that's a generalization. Because as soon as you take an event like this, then all of a sudden everybody uses deep state. Anytime people have an anger, which most do, uh, about something, they direct that toward an outside entity rather than inward, which is really where it is. So, you know, this man-made thing of being a deep state as a general thing, we don't know. So all of a sudden, the deep state does everything that we don't like. And that's, what it, that's where it becomes, because it's not specific enough. Rather than saying CIA agents at, in the 1960s, infiltrated and did something with Gloria Steinem to create some sort of engineered event to to do something that's specific I I believe in specific things but I don't think there's a general group that all of a sudden it's like a membership we have this membership and you know and it's really really um, bizarre to me that the deep state is always made out of rich liberals <laughs> and it's laughable. Like uh, everybody from Bill Gates to you name it, if they're on, if they're a liberal and they've got money, then they're obviously part of the deep state and they're globalists. They want to kill people. They want to reduce, they want to make us 
not be able to have children. There's, it just goes on and on and on. And that, if you're from the business world, you know that's absolutely absurd because there's, there's as many or more conservative rich people that try to control or deep state things as any liberal. So it's, a, it's, it's, just, it's just a fallacy. That whole thing is too general. And that's my issue with it. It's not that there isn't people doing things. We're not specific. It's like, it's like when people say, well, libtards, or, re, re, or they call Republicans names. They call both sides names. And I look at things and I thought, well, you can't generalize and say all people of one specific area or one specific race or sexual identity or anything is, is now all of a sudden something. And that's what it's become. It's not, it's not, it, we're not relying on facts. We're relying on how we feel about a person's lifestyle or politics or image. And that's ridiculous. You know, at Pizzagate, pedo, pedophile Hollywood, they're all that way. Like you hear all of these things rather than specifics, rather than a specific event with evidence. So that's my issue. Well, you must hang around different groups, that, different uh, deep state researchers than I do, because I don't know anyone who looks at the deep state and thinks it's liberal or, I mean, most of the people I know who look at that are completely apolitical like I am. They're like, no, not at all. Well, Alex uh, Jones my, down, you name, you name a person around the Alex Jones, 6 million followers, that whole group that is, and even coast to coast. Please, George Nuri, that whole empire is all red. It, you love, you'll never hear a negative derogatory. You find one interview on that, that show about a, a, a conservative anywhere in the world or them being part of any manipulation or any sort of negative, terrible event happening. Everything is caused by someone george soros is probably the biggest one you know uh ex-nazi you know but he's behind you know everything false flags school shootings that never happened crisis actors you get into all this generalization and hurt a lot of people but it's always always uh, about uh politics that's where you're mistaken if you're around people that are not then I don't, I don't know. You must have an exclusive unit that I've never come across. Well, I, I've just been doing a ton of interviews and there's a bunch of people. I just interviewed Steven well, Snyder. You, I just interviewed well, but you, John you put, Brisson. I just interviewed. You just, so you on, just talk on, about what on. I said with millions of followers, not thousands. We're well, talking but about I, Alex I Jones, get it. the Jim get Mars, it. the but, coast to coast. And who you find but Al, one. this is, you're doing, you're, you're doing exactly. But that's the majority. But you're doing exactly what you're railing against. You're kind of mm -hmm. identifying one one person, Not and then you're generalizing that that what the. So Alex Jones has a particular set of political beliefs. So what? The the yeah. idea of uh, of deep state. If he's co-opted that in some way for you that you can't think otherwise, that's fine. But I'm telling you, you know you look at a lot of this stuff in the deep state where that really took traction was with 9-11. 9-11 was, was, they were all Republicans, right? George Bush, uh, Dick Cheney, they were Republican as they can get. You know, I've, I've talked about the Pizzagate thing for years. First of all, what a lot of people don't understand about Pizzagate, and I don't want to get down and talk about Michael Shermer and consciousness, because this is like, I got 300 shows on consciousness. I don't really talk about this other political stuff, but my consciousness research, which you think you're a biological robot in a meaningless universe and consciousness doesn't exist, and you're a master's in music, and that's why you think Michael Shermer knows science. I'm going to show you in a minute that it's he, he, he completely doesn't know what <laughs> he does. He's not a good scientist. He's a PhD in history, but he's a good guy. You know, here's my point, though, back on, on, on the other point of, you know, Alex Jones and the 9-11 and the, the truthers, right? 
They were all against George Bush. They were all against Dick Cheney. They were all against the, 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 the opposite people. And when Pizzagate happened, Pizzagate was a conspiracy. It was a political psyop against John Podesta. The goal was to sink Hillary Clinton by releasing these emails. I mean, if you don't believe otherwise, you can tell me. But when they release 400 highly explosive emails four days before a presidential election, do you think that's accident that they're released four days? Do you, do you think that the fact that the, the emails are particularly uh, sensitive to uh, Christian, to a, the Christian voting bloc, and are really going to make them, oh my God, we can't let this Satanist Hillary and her Satanist friends in there. Do you think that's an accident or do you think that's a conspiracy? No, of course it is. But it, it kind of goes along with what I'm saying. Well, it's um, a conspiracy it, it's, though, right, Al? It's a conspiracy. Sure. Sure. Okay. So then I, I'm not you, anti conspiracy. I, I just think that it has to be more specific when we talk. And, and I don't like generalizations because the majority of conspiracy thinkers on the right come from the Alex Jones coast to coast empire. That's millions of people. And they all subscribe to this idea. They all that subscribe if you're, to this idea. Well, they're, they're certainly following. They pay money every month or every year to follow these people, to listen to their shows, to buy their products, whatever else they do. So they're invested in that. And all I'm saying is that's a huge chunk of them. Now, there's just as bad on the left with all this cancel culture and, and offensive stuff. That's just as bad. I'm not saying it isn't. But what I'm saying is we have to be more specific about certain things. We can't just generalize and say, well, of course, it's the deep state. But the same deep state that's, that's affecting Hillary because of these Pizzagate emails is not the same deep state that does other things. That's sort of what I'm getting at. There's more specifics to these cases and we have to be more specific about who we're accusing of what and what is realistic about what this. what is what are the specifics of the pizzagate emails that you know because you took a position that i've heard so many people who have been kind of brainwashed into thinking that Pizzagate is about a guy going into a pizza restaurant and shooting a computer. And what Pizzagate is really about, what the original term came from, was the emails well, themselves. So what do you know and what do you think about the emails? And what do you think? I mean, now it's not, it's, it's all revealed about the, the pedophile rings and the satanic ritual abuse. You know, I interviewed on this show, Annika Lucas, a woman who It's is, ridiculous. It's all ridiculous. It's people that have mental issues. It's as simple as that. There is no satanic rituals, cooking babies. If someone's coming on and saying that, most of them have a screw loose. Well, you can listen to my interview with Anna. I would Lucas. waste my time. Well, but here's the point. Here's the point out. Here's the point. These out. people are, are nuts and you know well, it. <laughs> you know it. These people Al, are, Al. are completely insane. Again, my bro, um, my bro, let me, let me educate you a little bit. Cause I do research for interview people. Annika, yeah. Annika Lucas, you know, the reason her story fits is because it fits in Belgium in the Dutro case which made news, it was in the headlines for years in Belgium because it was a major case. Some of the kids in the ritual abuse ring actually died because they had this guy in prison and he wasn't able to go feed these kids who he had locked up in cages. He wasn't able to feed them and they died. So they have all this stuff in pictures, in, in, in photos that ran in magazines and newspapers in Belgium. This has all been, been outed and there's testimony on it. So your, your quick reaction that it's all bullshit is, stands in contrast to some of the things we know. So the part that I think the line that you're taking, which really gets into the consciousness part, is you're saying, okay, I get that some people do horrible things, but since we're all biological robots in a meaningless universe, there can't be any entities out there that are influencing these people or any of the rest of that. Even though that's what they say, you're saying, no, no, put a, put a lid on that because 
that doesn't sound like anything I'm willing to accept. And that's going to get us to Shermer. But go ahead, comment on that first. Well, first of all, both the traditional Church of Satan and the Church of Satan have given me an honorary doctorate. So if you want to talk about satanic worship and what's real and what isn't, it's all man-made. Uh, you know, it's, it's Christian. Satan is a is a is a fixture used by Christians. If you're if you're a Satanist worshiping and cooking children or any sort of insane behavior, you're a Christian. Simple. There's nothing more. <laughs> There's nothing less. It's ridiculous to think anything other. And that is all man-made. It doesn't exist. And 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 so you know. To, if if you believe that evil is born in and there's actual, um, you know, Satan as a character and, and Jesus Christ was our savior and this is all real, then you're open to all of that stuff. And that is completely ridiculous. I don't believe any of that. None of that is true. If you okay. want to get into spiritual and near death and, and afterlife, yeah, sure. There's all possibilities. That, that's a totally different thing than a man-made everything from Mormons to Christians to Jews. It's all man-made because there's a terrible fear we have of death and, and, and a whole lot of other things involved too much to talk about in an hour. But that so, belief is out the door. It's craziness. You know, it's like when I went on um, ghost hunts with, uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren, who, of course, my last name's Warren, so if you get the connection, it's ridiculous when they're stepsons. Like, if you're not a Christian, you can't come on a ghost hunt because you cannot connect. Well, that's ridiculous. What a stupid thing to say, and what a stupid belief. So if you want to get into that, yeah, I'll tell you. Um, I've had lots of experience in both ends. I've been on plenty of ghost hunts, ghost shows. Um, so, yeah, there's a connection. There is something after our life. We are, a, 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 you know, a, just a meat. Uh, but I, I, I tell you, just start. Hold, hold on, right there, toward, right there. Sort, sort yeah. that out for me. So, first of all, I'm not a Christian. No. I share a lot of your uh, beliefs about, you know, when we talk about control and social engineering. I mean, that's the original right there, you know. But let's not get into that too much. There's a contradiction in what you just said, Al. You know, you can't say, well, I mean, you can say whatever you want, but you can't say, well, I'm down with the after death thing. Well, then you're down with the idea that there is this extended consciousness. When I asked you the survey question, you said, no, we're biological robots in a meaningless universe. So which, which one is it? Is there this extended consciousness realm where these, for lack of a better term, spirit entities, these extended outside of space and time entities exist? Or is, is there not? Because Michael Shermer, who will play the clip for a minute, because he's so badly loved the near-death experience research, believes that there is no such possible thing as an extended consciousness that survives after death. That is just verboten. And our scientific community that that is holding to that idea will not let go of scientific materialism so what wh you're you you're cutting a got me confused here with this do you believe that there is extended consciousness or do you believe there isn't it that it's all just biological robot meaningless universe well i think that it's it's both but i don't think it's an extended consciousness as you call it i don't think that we exist as we are after we die i think something happens i think we change just like everything so when we're dead we're something else it's not all of this um it's not all of this creation of of uh you know oh we're, we're ghosts and we're coming back and we're going to haunt you and we're going to do this or it's not a religion it's not any of that I think that it's a, we are part of uh, something that science hasn't got their hands on yet. But, our, you know, our meat bodies die. And, yeah, there is something after. We, we go on, but I'm not, I'm not believing we go on as we are now. 
like you and I are talking and having this conversation. We're using our mind and we're talking. Um, but after we're dead, this, is, this doesn't exist anymore. But what does exist, I'm not sure. I'm not saying it's an end. Michael Shermer's on the, on a, like a lot of people I know, are on the, when it ends, it's over. Lights out, done. Just like unplugging your computer and, and throwing it in the bathtub. It's done. Uh, that's how he feels. I feel there's something else. I feel we're still something. I'm just not sure what. And, and I'm, not, uh, I'm just not jumping. I used to believe in a lot of things over the years, but I, I'm just not so easy to jump anymore because th there's just no evidence of, of any of it. So um, I guess that's probably the best way I can explain it. That's fair. I, I don't think I have any firm ideas about what it is either. I, I, I can't exactly, you know, I can't get back to what you're saying about it's absolutely not this and that. It's absolutely not uh, satanic. Again, I get your point technically about Satan and him being, I have a whole chapter in my book about how Satan slips through your fingers historically. When you look back, he doesn't even exist in the original kind of pre-Torah stories. And then he just pops in there after Zoroaster. And that is the history of that. Anyone who's Christian or has a, a belief that all this stuff is satanic, you just have to look at the history. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not, though, uh, close to the idea that uh, evil exists, that malevolent forces exist. It's just too widely reported across every culture that we've ever looked at. And the, the, the vision we have of that now, the Michael Shermer kind of strict materialism, is purely an, a, a recent invention, invention that doesn't hold up to scrutiny. So if I can, because I told you I would, and we're running out of time, let me play a clip from my interview with Shermer, uh, Michael Shermer, that is, the creator, editor of Skeptic Magazine, and like I said, one of my favorite enemies, or <laughs> favorite frenemies, because I like his vibe, I like talking to the guy, and we had, it. I've interviewed him three times, and we always have a good chat. He just fails miserably at the science, which I find over and over again for these science types. They don't really understand the science, they just kind of, like a TV actor, pretend they do. Here's a, a clip from Shermer. At the books, I went to the index and I said, okay, here are all the near-death experience researchers I've talked to. Are they in there? No, name after name after name, none of them are in there. You know, a couple of years ago, I interviewed Jan Holden from uh, the University of North Texas, who along with Bruce, Dr. Bruce Grayson from the University of Virginia, two of the most prominent names in near-death experience research, they compiled this book. The Handbook of Near-Death Experiences, mainly for people in the medical community so that when they encounter someone who comes up out of a cardiac arrest and said, hey, I had this incredible experience, they can be at least familiar with what to tell them. At the time they published this book, Michael, in 2009, they had over 100 peer-reviewed papers that they included in their book. By now, there's over 200 peer-reviewed papers. I, mean, I, I don't see any of that in your book. I think it's important we make it, well, look, yeah, I don't have to cite everybody that's ever written on the subject. But you don't uh, cite any of them. You don't cite, I yes, mean, I do. oh, you yes, I Pin do. Von Lommel, Sam Parnia, who else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You misrepresented both of them, but you, yeah, you at least cited them. But at any rate, uh, let, let's back up for a second. And, and, and um, this and idea. I, I'd, I'd have to say, you know, Evan Alexander, I want to talk about him, but technically he's not a near death experience researcher. Okay, uh, enough of that. Uh, thanks for uh, hanging with me. This guy doesn't know the science. And yet, so many people who are just drawn to this idea that all this near death experience stuff is a bunch of baloney. They just are sucked in by this guy when it, people have directly contradicted him. I mentioned Pin von Lommel, Dr. Pin von Lommel, a radio, or a cardiologist, highly regarded cardiologist. He called Shermer out and said, you completely misrepresented my research in, in Scientific American. And Shermer's response was, well, that was my interpretation of it. You have the, the researcher, the scientist saying, 
you, don't, you just kind of said the opposite of what I said. He goes, well, that's just my opinion. You know, I guess we'll agree to disagree. This is where science is at today. And so many people just get, just get snowed over by it because they want to believe that the near-death experience is baloney or they want to believe that, you know, there can be none of these extended realms kind of thing. So yeah, I laid a lot on the table there, Al. Tell me what you think. Well, you know, um, when I died, <laughs> I felt nothing. I have no memory of it. So that's all I got to go by. I, I've had three heart attacks in my life, and, and one of them, um, I died. Um, I really can't tell you anything about it other than when I woke up. So that, that's my personal experience, and that's affected me in the sense that um, that's what I know. Uh, everything else is just people talking. Uh, some people believe that uh, there's something that goes on, and some people believe not, uh, or don't believe. I'm sorry, I, you know, I don't know. I just know with me, I didn't. There was nothing, and it, it, it also a lot of the uh, near death experience people I've talked to um, on interviews have always told me it seems like if you have a particular belief or a particular I don't want to say always religion, but some sort of um, faith. Um, that's what people see, you know. A lot of people uh, claim they've they've met Jesus or they meet meet uh, whoever or what whatever thing they're sort of into. It's sort of how how they they represent themselves as being near death. And uh, people that are atheists quite often see darkness. So I don't know uh, how how can we explain that? Is is that something? Um, our body and mind does. Um, it's a possibility. I, I, I think that's. I think it's a big question. I, I just don't see definites. I understand what Shermer's saying. Um, what do you think Shermer's saying? I think Shermer's saying that that's it. Uh, he can. He can. He compares us, the human, to a computer. You know, um, when you talk to him more about how the mind operates. I think you can understand him better. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't believe things yeah, quite as easily. Wrong. It's everything. No, no, actually some of his points are right. You know, the idea that, you know, when we look at something and we think we see something, we don't always see it. Um, right. Sometimes our mind fills in the blanks and this is true. And, and I think he questions a lot of what people claim that they have seen and felt. And I've seen it live. Look at, look at, you know, you go back to sure. the, the first planes, the Orville brothers, and how when that was coming out, and how many people reported seeing these flying machines, and they weren't, it wasn't possible. But there's a lot to say about how powerful our mind is. And I think it's a, it's a long way from us really understanding how much it, 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 it does. And so I think at this point in our lives, I think there's room for both people. You know, you can have Shermer saying, no, we're dead. That's it. Lights out. And you can have people like saying, oh, no, you know, there's something after. And, and neither one of them, I don't know how we could say either one of them is 100%. It's just one of those things that at this point, we just have to keep moving forward and trying to understand and, and figuring out more. I don't know. I guess we could just kind of go on the same. I mean, the, I, I can't. Resist, well, because one of the things you said at the beginning was that you said you've looked at the science for three years. I've mm -hmm. looked at the science, too. I've, I've probably looked at more near-death experience science than you have, just because that's what I became interested in, because it right. gets to this question of science more directly. I mean, I, it gets to this question of consciousness more directly. But I would have to say that I think science, and this is from a guy who wrote a book, Why Science is Wrong About Almost Everything, because it's really a book about consciousness and how if you don't, if you have a materialistic science, materialism view of science, and you're not factoring in consciousness, then you just really aren't doing the best science that we know and you're off. But the, the, the point is, I think we have to do better than kind of what you're saying there. I mean, we have to lean on science a little bit. We have to be able to call bullshit on Shermer, as nice as he is and as congenial as well, he is. Yeah, but yeah, say, but it, say, it say, say this. Say Shermer, when when you're talking about near-death experience research, 
and the, one of the leading researchers says you're full of shit, that you have a problem there that you need to fix. Yeah, but what is near-death research? And in and, and the fact that, you know, when you're dead, you're dead. If it's people that have come back, that have died or come back, such as myself, that, you know, you can talk to a lot of people, but you're still going by what they say they're they're witnessing and but, and and there's a lot of problems with that i think Al, science that's is, a big no, 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 no. misunderstanding there's no, no, a real no. misunderstanding isn't that there that a isn't center real... no but isn't there a center we are in a physical world you know there are certain things we science is dictating the physical world it's, it does not telling it we learn things from trial and error and we get better and better at certain things that's why we have so many things that we use that have been science based it's a material thing you're you're trying to mix consciousness with materialism and i think they're two separate things unless you think this whole world is just all part of our consciousness it's not real and and then see then then you're not going to get along with people like Shermer because there's no way they're going to accept that. That's I think that's simple. That's sort of my way of being in the middle, because I I think I think to be honest I like hearing from both sides and I and I and I think it's great. I I don't want to uh, create enemies. So I, it, there's things I, I I like on both sides. I just just. Uh, and I can't say what the, what the real answer is. Is is this whole physical thing that we're in just part of our our brain, our mind? Do we just do you know what I'm saying? I just I do know what you're saying, and and you make excellent points. It's really hard to to argue with someone who wants to know more, like you do, and saying I want to listen to all sides, like you like you do, and and like your show is a testament to that. I mean, you have on. You know, one of my favorite books, Dr. Mary's Monkey, you know, you've oh, interviewed Haslam, yeah. so many of these guys. I'll interview everybody and I'll go into great detail. And, and, and quite often I'll have someone sit in on the interview that, that uh, works with that particular field and, and writes in that field. And, and uh, even if I don't agree with them, because I, it's, it's a conversation that you have and it's what you come, comes out of that conversation. I think these people are, are great for the most part. Um, I love almost all of them. There's a few that kind of, <laughs> uh, but you know, that's just a thing, you know, sometimes you just don't click and, you know, um, I can't think of too many offhand, um, but there's been a few I know, but it, these, these people are great. Shane O'Sullivan is great. HP at Hank Alparelli, you know, he passed away, but uh, you know, I love that guy. Um, you know, I, I just, I can't say enough about him. Now, um, Judith ba Baker, I could take her leave, but <laughs> that's a different one. Uh, that's, but she's, um, she's really, she's really interesting to me, but uh, yeah, hey, I wanna, I, you know, I, I, I want to stop right there and, and say, I, I, I respect that so much because I find that very, very hard to do. And people who can do that, particularly, you know, you're a, a, a highly regarded influencer in that area and your ability to have those and to be able to say, hey, I genuinely like that person and I didn't really agree with what they're saying, but I'd like them as a person. Boy, doesn't that circle back around to what we we're saying at the beginning in terms of maybe what we need to uh, kind of connect with in order to change this kind of, uh, you know, situation we're in. But did you have any more thoughts on that of just saying? Well, you know, I will say that I was brought up in Canada. <laughs> and go. so... I was raised that way. We, we, you got to respect people. You got to take them and respect them. You got to treat them like you want to be treated. It sounds cliche, but the reality is, you know, I'm really interested in a lot of these things. There's certain things, a lot of them I don't know. So you bring these people on that, that have these ideas and you talk to them for an hour or two hours, you know, and, and it's great. You know, um, I don't have to agree with them. I don't have to, I'm not, I'm not living with them. I'm not getting married. It's just, um, you know, I, I don't see what the big anger thing is. I don't understand why people get so, so into all this stuff. And it's like, well, you know, it, at the end of the day, like I said, I've talked to all those people. We're still here. <laughs> he, they're all still there. And we get along really well. Out, you know, so I, I don't know what the big deal is. I don't have to agree. Like, we don't have to both like chocolate ice cream to be friends. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I, I just don't see why people hate each other because they don't 
don't agree. I mean, I, I that's just me, but uh, you know, I think that's, that's very, very, very profound actually. And I think it's, I know you're not super spiritual guy, but I think there's something no. incredibly spiritual about the we're still here part, you know? I mean, because one of the things I think is that, or I try and focus on is that I don't know what your journey is. I don't know what your journey has been up to now to get you to this point. And I don't know what your future journey is going to be in five years. You might call me up and go, oh my God, Alex, I, I thank you. I now have seen the light and I agree, but, or I might call, <laughs> I might do likewise. I might call you up and go, oh, Al, I'm so embarrassed, but thank you for not being, you know, for yeah. being nice and kind to me. So it's, <laughs> We don't know. We're just still here, like you, like you say. So beautiful. Well, and there's so many people that I've, I've got along with so well for so many years that um, if we get into certain subjects, we're just on opposite ends. But, I, you know, you just love them. I had a co-host for, I think, four years of the show that came from Alex Jones. And I just love this guy to bits. He's completely opposite of me. Um, Jewish, married, the, just the whole, the whole nine yards. And, but, I couldn't love a person anymore. And, and the thing is, that's the whole idea. It's about the person. It's about, it's about getting to know the people. And um, like I said, he can live and he can go to the synagogue. He can do his thing and, 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 and believe in his thing. And I can too. And that's the great part of being in America, or, you know, Canada, a lot of these countries. And that's the great thing. We have this, 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 incredible life to be able to do this but you know to cut them off because <laughs> because he's jewish or to or to cut someone off it's like that's ridiculous you miss out because they they can make your life so much better they enrich your life and i, I think it's i think I, I think people are missing out by um narrowing themselves to a certain tribe and that's it you know everybody oh, else is bad you know? Oh, I so, so agree with that about the narrowing and missing out. Al, what's coming up for you on the on the show? Uh, we got some interesting interviews coming up, and I, I got to believe you're working on probably a half dozen books at the same time. What's coming up on that front? <laughs> Always. I, well, yeah, you know, I've got, well, I, you know, um, I, I'm doing a series of a lot of those interviews that you've seen, like, so I've just um, done like the JFK, the interview. So I, I pick out the highlights of the interviews and go through all the main theories. And I've covered that with uh, Zodiac, JFK, and um, I'm going to be doing RFK. Just some of the big events that I've had over 10 years that, um, you know, I've talked to everyone, like I said, from Roger Stone to you name it, ab about a lot of these subjects. And I just kind of, and I give everybody an equal platform and kind of point out the, the 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 good things that we get from all of the, at the end of the day um so that you can have a reference to the interviews and kind of the ideas and where people get it from so that's i've been working on that a lot so um that's where i'm at now and um my last book came out murder time six and it's done it's been doing really well i met the murderer so that's probably why <laughs> so you, you have, have a like bunch that. of uh, a bunch of true crime and uh serial killer kind of stuff uh what what do people find most interesting in those books what, what books are, are most popular in that genre well the uh you know people love to hear from a killer for some reason and right now i i'm more when i write the book I, yeah i tell you what happened but i'm not into the gory details so if you're looking for you know this gore fest you're not going to get it i i'm more about um what happens to people and the justice system. So when we get like this last book was really about um, a man that killed six people, a family, and now he's up for, for parole and, and what the family goes through every year and a half to go to these parole meetings and what, what our justice system has done in the, in the sense of if you, if you're not part of it, you don't, you don't understand it. So it's just kind of all angles. I'm kind of, um, you know, and this, how this, this killers married someone. <laughs> he's, he's in prison uh, for murdering six people, including two children, which he raped six or no, nine and 11. And, and he's married a woman now with two children from her previous marriage. Just, just, just the, the, the yeah, just the whole, 
outlook of what goes on in in uh, in injustice, and that's probably why um, people like that sort of thing. I, I right now, um, but like I said, they're not gore fests. They're, it's more about the whole the whole big picture. Well, it's it's really cool, as you know, is evidenced by this research, this discussion we've had today. How you can hold these seemingly contradictory ideas and happenings, you know, and, and hold them and contrast them. And we really, really need that nowadays, don't we? Yeah. I don't know why we can't. Why do we have to have the definite answer? Why do we need to, you know, and some things for sure, but why do we need to, um, you know, just say this is that period and get, and over. And we, because we, on a lot of these things, we don't, we can't say that not with a hundred percent confidence. So I think that, um, God, just, just keep on moving, keep on trucking. You know, you're, <laughs> you're alive and, and you got your mind, you got your health. Let's just, uh, keep, keep doing it, doing the right thing. And just, uh, that's all I can say. We go forward and hopefully it all turns out. And you sounded way, way too spiritual for, uh, for where I was <laughs> Listen, you. Well, you don't need, you don't need to have, um, a belief in a, a religion in order to be spiritual. Um, right on. Because Disintermediation. Disintermediation. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, things that, you know, one thing I did learn from Shermer, <laughs> I will say, was that we don't need to have that. Um, people can be good and people can care about other people without believing in a God. And, uh, and he said that to me once about three, four years ago. And, and that really stuck with me. It's one of the few things that stuck with me um, from him. But it's true because, you know, you know, you can honestly care about other people and what happens to other people and helping others and doing good things without, uh, I don't need to go to church every Sunday. You know, I don't need to wear my Mormon underwear. <laughs> I mean that in the nicest I way. Got, you want, you I know. got you. No, you don't have to be nice on that one. Hey, our well. guest again has been Alan R. Warren, as in alanrwarren.com. You can check out all of his books on Amazon. Very easy to find because he is such a prominent author. And check out House of Mystery radio show. It's been just great talking to you, Al. I'm so glad we persisted on this interview. I hope people appreciate, you know, what we're trying to do here and bring in two people who seem to disagree and finding out we don't really disagree is kind of a cool thing, isn't it? Yeah. We all, we, hopefully we all want the same thing in the end, right? We all just want to be happy, live a good life and um, in, enjoy our freedom. I, I hope. That's what we want. And, and with that, yeah, there's going to be bumps along the way. But I, I don't see why we need to uh, bring down other people and hurt other people. We just need to keep on helping, you know. Nice, nice. I sound corny, don't I? <laughs> you you sign a sermon. We're going, to put a, we're going to put a Bible in your hand. We're going to start our yeah. own little church here. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, get, hey. get away with free tax. There you go. <laughs> and, and, and no masks. Yeah, there you, there you go. go. Double. <laughs> hey, Al, thank you so much. And uh, talk soon. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care. You too. Thanks again to Alan Morin for joining me on Skeptico. The one question I tee up from this interview is, what do you do personally to make it more possible to talk with people who you don't agree with fundamentally kind of on these kind of fundamental issues what techniques have you found to be personally effective i'd like to know i'd really like to know and i'd love for you to join me on the skeptical forum and tell me what your answers are to that so do that if you feel inclined do stick around i have some i think pretty good shows coming up until next time take care bye for now <laughs>